Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. So, good morning, Joe. So, you're back from Iceland, huh? Oh, yeah. We're actually back two months already. It does for a month (laughs) and a half. Time flies. Well, so time flies, but of course, you have so much to do with your clients before the end of the year. Yeah, we've actually uh, been busy. Uh, And the other interesting thing, and I hope it's a change, and this is something your listeners should listen to. No one, we really get busy. The end of May. Know what I have to tell everybody? It's hot. What the hell good is the end of May when you're you're telling me you're leaving for New York in a week? Uh, and I've had a bunch of people who came in the end of May, and I said, you got to come in as soon as you come back. And those are the people who have been showing up in November because they learned their lesson. They said, you know what, he's right. we got to deal with this stuff. It ain't going to go away. And, yeah, we're going to have company over the holidays. But let's get it started so that we're done in January or February and we finally have gotten our affairs in order. We've updated our documents. We've dealt with the issues we have to deal with. So that's been a, a positive. So that's one of the things I'm telling your listeners, that you you're not too busy to fit this into your schedule. Don't don't expect to come running into your lawyer, and hopefully it's us, in the end of May, and you're like everybody else. It's like the people who want to f- find cheap airfare to go <laughs> visit their family in Florida. They live in New York, and they go online December 20th, and they expect they're going to get cheap tickets round trip to Florida during Christmas and New Year's break. Give me a break. They're going to pay top dollar. If they knew they were coming, they should have bought the tickets in September or August. Same thing. Don't wait for the obvious. If you know you need something, you know you need to do it, or you know you need it looked at, come now. Right, come now. You know, Joe, there's so many new things happening now with what's going on in the government and also... The thing I like best about you is you really do keep everybody aware, alert, and you go into all your records. I know sometimes I get a call from you and said, okay, we have to update your records now because your husband just passed away. And I mean, that's an unusual situation with a law firm. You know, so many of them, just like insurance uh, representatives, you never hear from them again. You, you're an orphan. Yeah, and that's true. And And the... People I work with uh, are entitled to get that. So we have different relationships. So with our clients, they're told every three years you're entitled to a free review. That doesn't mean you'll change anything. But and the re- and obviously, if you do change things, you will pay for that. But the review is free. Are your documents still in order? Did you do the things with your assets that you were supposed to do to make it easy for your family if you pass on? Have you? And some of the stuff we ask people that we've told them to do, so we say, have you given your children copies of the health care surrogate so they have it so that they can access it if they get a phone call that you've been in an accident or you're sick? In fact, for the last couple of years, our clients walk out with a thumb drive or flash drive of all of their documents so they can download it into their own computers. They can email it to their children. So if Chandler were out skiing in in the Alps or in Aspen, Colorado, and he found out that you were in a car accident and he had to... Uh, And I'm using him by example. I'm not even saying that he's making your decisions. I'm just picking your son who's here. That, or or my son, or my wife, they get, they get, they can go onto their smartphone and download the healthcare surrogate and email it to the hospital and say, I'm in charge. I can make decisions. I can get information. So we try to get our clients to, and that's the reminder that we give people who maybe they signed three years before and they were either overwhelmed or 
they were running back to New York right before they did it, or they just said, oh, I'll get to it. We say, you got to do this. You got to let your people know. You got to, why did it, why is this bank account not in your trust? I had somebody who came in who, uh, I didn't do their estate plan, who's, a, who tells me the whole story about how their children are different and, Two of their children, they don't want to leave a lot of money to because they just are inappropriate to receive it. Yet their estate plan leaves everything equally in quarters to the four children where they didn't even realize they hadn't, that's what it said. And they said, okay, we got to fix this. And who will be in charge of the money for the children who can't handle it? So you get that stuff and you get people in. Joe, let me let me just stop you for a moment because you, you, the situation that you've just brought up is so common now, where kids are fighting one another. Uh, there can be someone who has been the caregiver all the time, and then someone from up north, one of the brothers or sisters, the siblings. Oh no, no, I don't like what you're doing, and I mean it is very, very bad. But let me let me tell you something else that just happened. You know that I have long term health care insurance, and now what mm-hmm. the company does is they send you a form, who is the next person in case we don't receive the payment on time. So while Chandler was having dinner, I had him sign it off. So if something doesn't, you know, if I forget for some reason, then they would notify him that I didn't make the payment. Absolutely. And insurance companies have to do that. But but if Chandler got a bill in the mail for you and didn't know that you had this insurance, he might say, what the hell is this, and think it didn't even apply to him. And it might have looked like a solicitation if he wasn't careful. And I know he's he's an exacting, careful lawyer, but not everybody's kids are. And they get that stuff, so you got to tell them. I had a client who had his secretary pay his personal bills. He just would go in, give his secretary his bills. Guess what? He died while he was still a working man, and... His widow said, I can't believe his secretary didn't pay his million-dollar life insurance policy, and it lapsed. Oh, terrific. This I'm not making up. This is real life. Now, obviously, he got the bill alone. He should have had somebody else get the bill. I've named somebody on my insurance policies. Half the people I have don't even know what they have or where they have it. I come in and they'll say, they'll say, oh, well, they'll do a trust and they'll put their, oh, that's just a small amount of stock and, oh, that's just a small bank account. And I'll say, okay, but guess what? That's one full-blown probate when you die over all of this. What do you think is it's, oh, it's just a small. So when your kids come in and you die, should I tell them they should do probate or that their father and mother decided they didn't care about that money, they could abandon it? And you get that. And that's the stuff we do when we meet with people. But the whole thing, again, is reminding your clients, having a sense of responsibility. Uh, Our accountant that works for us that does clients' tax returns and non-clients, by the way, there were some people who have hired our accountant to do their tax returns, but have a relationship with a lawyer that they didn't change, and she ends up, or don't have a relationship. There's still a lot of people who pay taxes, do their taxes, but don't do any estate planning because they're living in a, that's not going to happen to me world. Uh, so Joe, and she'll Joe, say that. Wait a minute. Where's this tax deduction for the rental property you had last year? Okay. No, I, say, we you know what? It. I don't. I'm sorry, but I don't want to forget. You have your your survival, your senior survival workshops coming up. I want to make sure that everybody knows when they are, and that's really important. And unfortunately, our December issue is just coming out, so I don't have. I have it. Oh, good. So tell us when it is. Are you kidding? You know they give me, when I call you up, I have my <laughs> okay. news, my my column and my seminar schedule so in front of me. Efficient. Okay, so, so tell us when they are. Tuesday, we do our 
free senior survival workshops where we talk about traditional estate planning, we talk about long-term care, veterans benefits, Medicaid planning, what you can and can't do, and what you should or shouldn't be doing. And we are doing it Tuesday, December 5, from 1.30 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Courtyard by Marriott in Boynton Beach. And I'll be doing that workshop uh, Wednesday, December 6, at 1.30 to 4 p.m. in Port St. Lucie at the Port St. Lucie Holiday Inn. And Jenny Bernstein, who's a board-certified elder law attorney, who's been with the firm 13 years, is going to be doing that. She, she's been doing them for years. Thursday, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, in Palm Beach Gardens from 1.30 to 4 p.m. at the Palm Beach Gardens Marriott. And again, Jenny will be doing that because I'm going to be looking after a client's daughter. I'm a, I'm the trustee of a, one of my client's daughter's monies because she is bipolar, and I'm going up to see her and her caregiver in Baltimore on uh, Thursday. So Jenny will be doing that one as well. Okay, well, I want to people tell everybody, would... no, I'm going to interrupt you because i got to control this so that we make people come. Okay, if you want information, you can go to their website, which is carplaw.com, K-A-R-P-L-A-W.com. Or if you want to call, you don't need reservations to attend these. If you want to call their office for any reason, it's 1-800-893-9911, one 800 Eight nine three ninety nine eleven. I'm going to throw something at you right now. I have two wonderful people in my, you know, in my studio right now, uh, because they, uh, the the woman is is beautiful, but she's an audiologist. And I was thinking about that as you were saying that you talk to these people about this and that. Are you always sure that they're hearing properly what you're telling them? Oh yeah. I I work hard at that. I make sure uh I don't lawyer them with fast talk. The people at the workshop, we we tell them to sit close, but when we're meeting with people, we're meeting in an intimate table where we can talk now. And they'll let me know. My my the people who come into me are totally honest. I mean, they're telling me about the dysfunctionality of their family. They're talking to me about what they've done wrong in their own life financially. They, they'll tell me that they don't like their daughter-in-law or that their son is not nice or uh, all of the stuff. So they open up, and the fact that they can't properly hear uh, or see is expressed. Some people are in greater denial about their memory loss issues and their 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 cognitive skills, but... I'll catch him and I'll say, well, it looks like you're really not being forthright. You just asked me that question five minutes ago. And I'll be doing that, especially when I have a husband and wife there. And I want to know whether he should still be making her medical decisions, whether he is the one who's... And when it gets to audiology, I ask, will he be able to hear the doctor when the doctor's on the phone and she'll say humorously, he's never listened in the 50 years we're married. Why do I think he should hear the doctor <laughs> now? Bad. But we get to some integrity. And when we start to address right. those issues, especially if, if the wife is sick, my question is the husband's hearing is probably diminished. And we get some candor from both of them that the husband would probably be too emotional to to grasp it all. So we say, who else can talk to the doctor? Who else can get the information? So we do that. The other thing we should add, Anita, is people who attend the seminars. If we think we can help you, you will get a free consultation. You will get a free consultation if we think we can help you. So it's an opportunity for a second opinion for people uh, of their existing estate plans. For many people, it's a review that they haven't had since they did their first estate plan 20, 30 years ago, or their last estate plan 15 years ago. And the number of people that have 
substantial reasons to change their estate plan, didn't even think about it, didn't even realize it, didn't have the integrity to to address it. You know, the, a lot of us put our heads in the sand when there were things going on in our lives that we don't want to address. So it gives people that candor. And my clients, we ask them to come back every three years. And not every three years do they need to do anything. But usually after six or nine they have to. Life changes. And then sometimes they discover they don't have to, that we built in uh, something for grandchildren if they're any or after born. So there's a lot that can be done. Joe, let me... But yes, we deal with that. Let me ask you a couple of questions. When you started this so many years ago with us, 18, 19, I don't know how long ago, but what's actually changed in the law practice, the elder law practice? I mean... Just generically. Okay, when I first when I first started doing it, the yellow pages didn't even have an elder law in. <laughs> this is really funny. Twenty five years ago, when the yellow pages would come to me, they did not have a subheading called elder law. Twenty five years later, nobody goes to the yellow pages. <laughs> so there's really a, a changes that come place. So people didn't even know we existed. Today, something I said years ago is taking place. Anybody who writes a will says they practice elder law. There's a lot of people who are talking that they can do Medicaid planning, and candidly, there are better ways and worse ways to do it. Because I always look at how much is it going to cost, how much is it going to save. I was at a meeting yesterday where I talked about a lawyer who absolutely did. Somebody came to me where the lawyer absolutely did every possible wrong thing to qualify somebody for Medicaid where they didn't have to do any of those steps. They were technically not incorrect, but they were practically incorrect. So, for example, he did a deed. The husband and wife owned a rental income property. He made them deed that property to the daughter and made them sign an employment contract that the daughter was going to be their caregiver so that their daughter would have had to pay income tax on the value of the house that was being transferred. And that's a kosher deal, but the fact of the matter is that house didn't have to be transferred. Rental income property is unavailable. So this guy caused about a $100,000 taxable event for the daughter to help get Medicaid for the mother when none of that had to be done. So there's a lot of people doing stuff they don't know. The other th- and, and these people would have said, oh, this lawyer got us Medicaid, but did he do it the right way? So there's a lot of people doing this. The laws have changed, and people are now significantly more aware of elder law, so that's a big change. People are more scared than they were 20 years ago because – when people walked into my office at 75, 20 years ago, living to be 95 and still out there functioning was not really in their game plan. They would, when 20 years ago, 75-year-olds were doing long-term planning. They said they were thinking about before I die in the next five to 10 years. They still come into my office wearing tennis shoes and jeans, <laughs> and they're 90. I love it. So you there's know, a whole bunch of I, other changes. I have to tell you something. I was just, I didn't hear the interview, but I think it was on NPR. There's a woman in Hallandale who's 109 years old. She lives alone. She volunteers everywhere. She plays cards once a week uh, with her friends, and she's in great health. They said that she doesn't even take medication, so... Yes, things have changed a lot, but but you have been really terrific to be able to keep people in good stead with their um, with their families whenever possible. That everything is taken care of, and I know that is frustrating for you when people come in like that. But people think of you as kind of the guru. I think of the elder law here. If anybody's smart, they'd know that because I've been doing this a long time. And I know when you and I first started this, there were very, I don't know of anybody that I even heard doing what you and I've been doing. 
So it's been really a pleasure, of course, to have you out there knowing what you're doing. But now I want to talk a little personally. So Iceland, was it absolutely wonderful, and did you relax? Uh, I did relax. It's a very – now, as you know, my wife and I tend to do nature trips that usually involve animals. But this year I was a little tired, so we decided to go up to Iceland, which is very, very pretty, very relaxing, very non-stressful. And very cold? You're not going to see many many animals except for sheep. Uh but it's it's just gorgeous. We 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 did not catch the northern lights, but fortunately, many years ago we saw it about ten, twelve years ago in Alaska. But they have the northern lights. We probably saw three dozen rainbows uh, or four dozen. We saw a couple of double rainbows. We saw two locations where we actually saw the end of a rainbow. Right on the ground, I was looking for the pot of gold and the leprechaun, and somebody beat me to it. And Your wife's the, the pot of gold, but you, you know that I'm, I'm running a cover picture on the December issue of the waterfall with the rainbow, and I have that great article that she wrote, too. So I, I think you need that rest and relaxation. I'm so glad that oh, you do that. Oh, everybody does. I come back. Uh, one of the things I learned, and people should learn it in their own lives, but I learned it over 20 years ago, is that I, if I take a week or two off and really take it off where I'm not involved in the office, I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day affairs, I come back so recharged and so energetic that... What I normally accomplish in the next two, three weeks after I came back is more than I accomplished in the two months before I left because you just come back energized, relaxed, your ba brain is clear. So I, I came back really full of energy. So I'd recommend that people look into Iceland. It's, it's actually in Europe, even though it's not on the continent. Uh, very crowded with tourism, by the way. It's a small country in terms of population, a little over 330,000 people, but they've had 2.3 million visitors this year. What do you attribute that to? Well, it's safe. It's clean. There aren't a lot of terrorists flying into Iceland, so people <laughs> feel very comfortable. Uh it's convenient. It's not crowded. It's a relaxing trip. Uh, and it's just, I mean, people are scared and uh, overwhelmed with going to European cities. There's been problems there in the traditional continental Europe. Uh, and they want to see something different. Well, and, one thing, uh, hey, Joe, I have to tell you, I am inviting you. Next month, you've got to come here and take me to breakfast, or I'll take you to breakfast so that we can do a, a live show again like we used to. Your question, do you yes. have a 7.30 show for me, or am I going to be sitting there from 6.30? <laughs> you give me a 7.30 uh, You got 7.30. You come in the, in the morning, you can have 7.30. I will tell Debbie, <laughs> and if I have a problem, I'll let you know in advance okay. about which my problem, unless I'm out of town. Yes, yeah, which your so problem. Anyway, uh, let me tell we, everybody again, I don't want to forget this now, uh, that remember, Joe Karp's Senior Survival Workshops are absolutely fabulous, and you don't want to miss them, and they are coming up, and I'm going to give you all that. I wrote it down when you told me that. So, um, okay, so just everybody, just get your pencils out. Remember, this is Pencil Talk Radio. So it's Tuesday, December the 5th, from 1.30 to 4, and that's going to be up. It's going to actually be at the Boynton Beach uh, Marriott, Courtyards of Marriott. And the next is going to be up in Port St. Lucie, Wednesday, December 6th, same time, and that's at the Holiday Inn. And then December 7th is a Thursday from 1.30 to 4. It's going to be at the Palm Beach Gardens Marriott. His seminars are so incredible. He has a, you know, you have a great sense of humor, but you have so much information and people love it. I mean, I've been to so many of them and you've been doing those for 
I don't know. I think, what, 20 years? I don't know how you do this. You're an amazing guy. I've been doing them continuously, actually, since 1994. Uh, (laughs) You're just amazing. And here's the other thing I'm seeing. You know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So I see people trying to do this again. Uh, years ago, people started to try to do seminars like mine, but they never end up staying and doing it. That's right. why we've been doing it continuously. We want people to have the assurance they know we're there. We are, you know, we're five lawyers strong, uh, and we're there for our clients. And that's the other thing I was going to say. When we talk to people over the years, people who have been a little more reserved about their lives you asked what's different after the years of being there they talk to me my business card says counselor at law and they talk and we understand their family and the biggest change that has taken place with my clients besides their longevity is when i started doing this once every six months somebody would say i'm leaving my son or daughter nothing Today, in my office, without exaggeration, at least one out of every, every day, somebody comes into my firm and meets with one of the lawyers. I would say one out of every six clients is now no longer making provisions for a child. There's a lot of stress in a lot of families. And people come in and they are so relieved when I tell them, you're not, this this is going on all over. This is not just you. The number of that that's going on for the listeners who just heard that, that I just impacted on, have a sigh of relief. It's not you. There's, I don't mean this facetiously. There's something in the water. There's something <laughs> going on that is so different. Our children have been treated so well that they have become miserably spoiled and they feel so entitled, that, mm. and they and it's almost like they resent that their parents haven't died yet and given them the money. Oh, Joe, stop that! That's terrible. But I, you know what? I, I, the people who are there in pain because their their son asked them, or their daughter asked them, or their daughter in law, and they've got this animus that has been floating. It's like. It's really a very sad reality that I see in my practice. Well, we'll talk about that at another time because I want to keep this happy. And I have to tell you, it's the the big moon. Did you see the moon outside last night? No, I will see it tonight and tomorrow. Actually, I think Sunday night's the big one. Well, it was pretty big now. And then, you know, they said something about people are doing strange things because something to do with the moons of Jupiter. I don't know. I'm not into that, but... Anyway, Joe, as usual, it's always wonderful to have you on. I hope that uh, you have a very beautiful holiday, and um, I'll talk to you soon. And to all of your listeners, Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. Thank you so much, Joe. Take care. Bye. Bye.